Hey everyone, Burton's back and this time we're playing a new game for the channel, it's Battle Brothers. As you can see this is early access and it's somewhat a cross between the vastness of Mountain Blades with the uh, battle mechanics of something like Banner Saga. So hopefully you're going to enjoy this series. Um, let's start shall we? So we're going to go for a new campaign. Um, well, we don't want the Storm Crows. I was having a little bit of a test before, and I've decided to go ahead with um, the Band of the Red Hand. Now, if you don't know who the Band of the Red Hand are, shame on you. And I suggest you go and uh, read the Wheel of Time series, because they are sort of a legendary mercenary organisation um, made up of uh, Mentorin heroes. Um, and they were sort of the last to fall in a grand battle against uh, the onslaught of a Trolloc army. And uh, you know what? Just saying that is getting me into this. Sadly, I had a look through the banners and there isn't actually any red hand. So the closest I can come up with is this white hand. And maybe the, the blood of our enemies is what's going to douse this hand from white to red. So I think that's fine. We're going to start on normal difficulty because I've only played the game a little bit. And we're going to be learning as we go. Uh, as you can see, website's in the bottom left hand corner, I advise you to go and check it out and support this lovely game. Uh, let's get into things, let's start it off. Obviously that's me, standing in the middle, with my beard. Nice. The last battle. It all went wrong. Two days ago the company was hired to track down Hoggart the Weasel and his band of raiders. But it was them who found us first. An ambush. Some joke about horses cut short by an arrow to the throat. Arrows shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, I draw my weapon with the rest of my men, only to collapse to my knees. An arrow has punctured my side. A shout in pain, Harry's glance sees the men charge without me. Make one valiant last stand. Met in force as steel clashes with steel. My eyes meet with the captain's, a last nod before his throat is cut. I am left in command now with what few men remain. Trembling in pain, I lean on my sword. Ah, with all the will I can muster, I slowly rise again. So here we go, we can see we are in dire circumstances indeed. Two of our men are down and it's three on three. So this acts as like a little tutorial to the combat system, which you'll see here. As you can see, it's turn based in the, uh, in the bottom corner. We're currently on Aldebert the Krill, who is going to be looks like our primary missile Archer, and uh, we're going to see what we can do. So let's have a look. We've got aim shot and we've got quick shot. We're not going to review these too much right now. We'll wait until we're through this battle first. But there is a man with a shield who I do not like the look of. There's Hoggart the Weasel. We're up against Bandit Thug. Generic one and two. Okay, let's see what we can do against them. So 39%, 50% chance. Hoggart the Weasel 41. Well, I'm going to go for this man and see how we manage. Excellent, we get a hit. Hoggart's decided he's had enough of this by the looks of things. Now we've got our main axe man, which is Arna. So I'm actually going to move Arna up one space. Now that's actually going to be okay. Can we break his shield? We can. So we're going to try this. There we go. And now his shield has been thrown to the floor, broken and battered. And now it's time for Ingobert to move on up. Now Ingobert, yeah, it's in his zone of control. We're going to have to move and see if we can just get a quick thrust into this. In fact, no, let's go for shield wall. We'll defend. Oh my god. Very smart indeed for you to go straight to our archer unit. But our archer unit has come prepared. Let's switch to his dagger nice and quickly. And we'll stab him a few times hopefully. Ah, we missed the first one. Darn it. Go and help out our archer. Oh my word. So you can see what happened there is as I'm in sort of their, their control area, 
If I attempt to move out of that area, they can actually get a free swipe, so I've actually just taken damage that we really didn't need to be taking. So I'm going to reply to that by trying to split the man in half. Unfortunately, our goal has been done. So we're a little bit limited with what could be done. Let's try this one instead. And off with his head. Excellent. Well done, I'm... I'm <laughs> well done, Anna. Right, this is going to be dangerous, but we'll have to try and distract him somewhat. And nothing distracts you more than being stabbed in the ribcage. So what have we got? We've got a stab action, we've got a puncture action. I'm going to go for puncture. And we've missed the puncture, so let's try and go back to stab. As you can see down here, we've got action points remaining, we're on one of nine. <laughs> Thankfully, we have plenty more here, so we could choose to knock him back, push him somewhat out of range, but that's not going to do too much. We can choose to be defensive, but we're going to be thrusting our weapon, hopefully in his eyeball. There we go. So at the end of every fight, you'll get a screen such as this, where you can see that uh, one of our men's wounded. Poor Arno has been wounded. He did manage to kill one person at his Engelbert. So their XP is actually going up fairly evenly. Alderbert the Cruel didn't do too good. And uh, we do have some loot to have a look at and we've managed to get ourselves a bludgeon. So we're going to be taking that and hopefully trying to sell that on or maybe even equip a new mercenary unit. So as we leave, we uh, have a quick look at the map. We'll zoom out and see what we have around us. Obviously, it looks like we're actually in the lands of... Let's have a look, a certain faction. And it would be House Perovinger. And their words are obey. House Perovinger is hated by many, but feared by even more. A number of small and big uprisings have been put down with fire and swords as the Pervinger henchmen are known to have eyes in every shady corner and ears in every wall. Their family's ancestral home is uh, Musvesti. Uh, it's swarming with armed guards, sniffling war dogs and bulky mercenaries to protect their paranoid leaders. I'm not going to have a look at the other two houses just yet, I'm just having a look where we are. So that's their capital. And you can see our objection here is to kill our objection. Our objective is to uh, kill um, Hog out the Weasel, which we haven't been able to do. He just ran away from us. So let's have a look at the screen as we're having a look here. So on the top left, we can see we've got our crowns, which is our finances. We've then got our provisions, which is our food stock to keep our uh, the bands of the Red Hand fed. And we've also got things like tools and supplies. It's to keep the weapons, the armor, the helmets all in you know good working order. We've then got ammunition, which obviously you know what ammunition is. And then we've got medicinal supplies as well. So it gives you a good idea of the, uh, the sort of support structure that we have as a mercenary unit. So I think enough of me blabbering on. Um, let's, let's start the day, shall we? The aftermath. I'm alive. We have won. The adrenaline fades and... In its wake, I can't help but sink back to the ground. It looks like I won't be holding the sword again anytime soon. I grit my teeth and I snap the arrow shaft. My chest heaves for breath, feeling the pain well up in my very lungs. Most of the company lies dead before me. All those men I fought with side by side in the shield wall this past year and Hogart did justice to his name, running like the weasel that people mock him to be. What now? A voice says from behind. It's Arnie, who sits down beside me, bedding his bloodied axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues. The captain's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader, but all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Ingelbert Orkbane joins the two of you, still breathing heavily. Let's save the anointments for another day. I figure we'll give the men a good burial and then return to uh, Strandy to collect our pay. The weasel's men are slain after all, even if the man himself took tail and ran. And we ought to see to that arrow sticking out of you before we lose another man. So, so be it. So, we've got ourselves our little... Uh, a little quest, so to speak. And this tutorial takes the form of a quest, which is quite nice. So now we can see we've got to retire 
uh, to uh, Strand um, to uh, get paid. So apologies for these pronunciations. I know they're somewhat meant to be either Germanic or Norse, but we're going to head back to Strand. So as you can see, as you hover on over, you can see we have a relations trap, which obviously is neutral. It's a small fishing village made of, uh, of a few humble huts. So let's uh, head back there and we'll unpause as we make our merry way, we'll zoom in. So as we can see, we've got a road structure which is going to help us progress there a little bit faster. And if you have a look around, so you can actually see what we have. These are just little fishing hut villages. The return to strands. What a sorry display it must be for the unlockers as I arrive in Strand. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down on their luck. The man who hired the company days ago, Gerhard the Stewart, no doubt it expected me to return in a more glorious fashion. Still he welcomes me into his house again and offers bread and wine whilst the servant fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunts and wheeze as an elderly man with shaky hands tends your wounds. Finally, Gerhard the Stewart breaks the silence. So, how did you fare? A pin knife through my skin, the first of many stitches to come. I grip my teeth, so you think you hear one break. Gerard the Stuart takes on a grave look, and he quickly hides his face behind a drink of wine. Finding breath, you give him answer to his asinine question. We killed all of Hogarth's men, but he managed to elude our blades in the end. The healer waves around a glowing fire poke, suggesting he wants to push it into my wound. I nod, and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire, flesh from fame. Um, as the pain subsides, you come to see that Gerhard the Stuart's mood has lightened. Ha! So all his men are dead then? Well, that's, uh, that's, I see. A good thing you removed that threat from Strand, but that man is truly elusive. I do expect to get paid for this, so let's see what we actually get. Gerhard the Stuart gasps. Well, naturally, I, I gave my words, didn't I? A hundred crowns for every man, so there's four of you left, so that's four hundred crowns. He gestures towards his servant who nods and hands him a wooden chest from which he takes the pay. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? I very much like to end the headache that is Hogart the Weasel once and for all, and I would like to pay for your service once again. How about a, uh, another 400 crowns, shall we say? Arnie scoffs and turns to drink more wine by Engelbert Orkbane stands to speak. Yes, the company is in ruin, but we can rebuild it. You know Arnie. He drinks the crowns away and ends up begging on the streets. And Alderbert the Cruel wouldn't fare any better chasing the woman folk until one stove his rotted head in. We need the bands of the Red Hand. It's all we have. What do you say, Captain? Oh, Captain, my Captain. Um, Arnie burps and raises his cup to you. Alderbert the Cruel playfully thumps his nose and nods. You're the Captain now, and your men expect you uh, to uh, take up the mantle of leadership. So, decision is on me. I've received the promotion, it appears I am now the leader of this mercenary band. So I believe, yes, we do have some unfinished business with Hogart. And if you're new to the game, I suggest you um, actually play this. This continues with somewhat of the tutorial phase. Um, so yeah, we'll carry on with this. Um, Gareth Stewart claps his hands in satisfaction. Very good, excellent. I need some time to find out if Hogart is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end when this time comes. I shall see you in a few days. Time. At the latest. Well, I just ruined how you actually say that. Apologies. Um, obviously, there's a lot of reading to go through in this and I'm happy to go ahead and read in it. Although, I can't guarantee that I'll be using the same voices. Um, obviously, we might start skimming through this in the future. Let me know in the comments if you want me to carry on reading all of this, or if you want me just to say, you know what guys, pause the video, you can read it yourself. 
So I had to leave the comforts of Gerard de Stewart's house and stand on the outskirts of Strand again and go where Orkbane seeks a word with me. Uh, what is it we need is more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but we ain't nothing without more warm bodies in the ranks. That's true. Uh, we should hire at least three more sword hands, buy them some decent weapons and dress them in the best armour we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this Bodunk town's got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life. Or we could travel to Moosefest in the south. Them city folk aren't always as hardy as these country bumpkins, but we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there, and they sell better weapons too, so hmm. So we've got a couple of choices. We can either get some peasants in Strand, or we can go down to Moosefest and try and get ourselves some better quality troops and better quality weapons. We need at least three more recruits. Now our money is actually in a good place. I'm going to see what we've got available in uh, in Strands first I think. So let's head in. Right, obviously we've got a marketplace. So let's have a quick look at what men are available. So we've got a fair few. Now the good thing with the men, some of the traits will uh, somewhat be hidden until you get them, but you can see here their uh, vocation in life, and you've got their background, which is actually quite handy. So we've got Rolo, we've got a hell of a lot of fishermen, quite expensive for fishermen. You can see a lot of them have nets, so nets would be good. Rifard, who's a vagabond, he's got higher max fatigue, that's not actually too bad. Hmm. I think we might take uh, Ruthard along with ourselves. Let's have a look at his story first. Pushed out of his town by war, Ruthard wanders the world as a vagabond. Sadly, the world is not a pleasant place for those who nobody would miss. He was harassed and bullied every day. The world has been harsh to Ruthard for many years now. That isn't going to change. But at least he'll be with brothers now. I like that, we'll take Ruthard. Um, I feel like we need to head to the other town and see if we could get a couple of better people. Let's have a quick look in the marketplace. So as we can see, it's worth 13 gold, or oh, it's worth 61, but we only get 13 here. Now, do we really want to sell this item? No, I mean, we're probably going to give that to Ruthard. What I am going to do, though, is probably buy this shield. Let's get Ruthard's kitted out a little bit. So Ruthard's, oh my god, you're actually wearing a sackcloth. Um, can we really be doing with that? Let's just get him with these two. What has he actually got? So, he's got a bash, which is, comes as part of the bludgeon. A knockout ability and a knockback. That's not too bad. Um, yeah, we don't have anything there. Okay. Well, we are going to leave Strand. Um, it's midday as well. So one of the things that you'll probably find when you're traveling across this uh, great map is that you might have to camp a little bit. So you've got camping actions there. Also keep an eye out for footprints that you might encounter. As you can see here, we've got a first Moose Fest company. There's eight of them there. It looks like they're on patrol, but occasionally you'll find some footprints that will be out here and normally that's people or things that are up to no good so keep an eye out for them. So we'll follow this down, we're heading into the Barrens now and it's the afternoon of day one. We should get there before nightfall, there's some of those footprints I was talking about which you can see in front of us, looks like someone's on the road, probably going to be a caravan or a patrol. Along the way as the silhouette of Musta, uh, Moose Fest appears on the horizon, Aldebert the Crow seeks a word with me. Never been to Moose Fest before myself, but I've been around. These big cities are expensive, much more so than strands and other villages like it. But the merchants have everything we need. Weapons, armour, food. If there's a smithy in Moose Fest, it's worth a visit too. Will be expensive for sure, but we'll, they'll sell real weapons made for war, not just farming tools. We could also browse the wares on the marketplace of course. There's a few bargains to be made, but they'll also try and sell us stuff that'll break apart if you so much as sneeze on it. Don't get swindled by the cutthroat merchants, Captain. Okay, so that's um interesting development, so we need to keep our eyes peeled in the marketplace. 
and it sees fit to add to his own opinion on what I should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that uh, that's where we head first. Pay around from the company's coffers to get us all drunk for the night and raise our spirits. God knows we've earned it. Aldobert the Krill shakes his head. We say that every time we stop in the town, even when they, we ain't done anything yet. Yeah, I'm I'm agreeing with Aldobert. So uh, we're gonna head off into the town. Um, but I think we're not gonna be buying any uh, <laughs> any uh, any drinks for anyone. Right, let's get here. Here we go. So Moosefest, a citadel towering high over the surrounding woods. So we need to get ourselves two more people for the band. As you can see, we're actually spoiled for choice. There is a bloody lot of people. We've got 3,200 uh, to spend. So we've got Henrik the Hunter. He's a lot. And the reason why he's a lot is because have a look at him. He is particularly good. Um, we're not going to be spending anywhere near that. These men are very good. We can actually get a butcher there. Leave the bowyer. Hmm. God, these are expensive. We might have to take Anton and oh, Her Herman. Grinning near to it, Herman never looked so happy as when his shop opened. He got his first order of live pigs in stock. Given the type of rumours of dark arts already going around, it wasn't long until people began questioning the source of his meats and drove him out of business. Herman is known to bite his tongue and savour the blood. He sounds like it's someone we want, so we'll bring Herman on board. Higher range skill, I like higher range, what have you got? Yeah, you as well. Volmar has... Oh, you've got plus 5 experience as well. Uh, with Carl's hands and an eye for thin strings, Volmar is a Fletcher and a Bowyer, but after so many years of making weapons for others, he began to wonder what else there was to life besides wooden string. Now he seeks a different path. If he can't sell bolts, maybe he can use them. Interesting. Sigmund, interested in the thrill of the hunt, he sought wildlife to which... Um... Yeah, he's had a bad hunt, and he's been in that... No. I don't think so, he's only been caught once. Rollo's too expensive. I, I think we're going to go for Volmar. Excellent, right, now we're going to have to go to this marketplace and make sure we don't get swindled. <laughs> oh, in fact, before we do that, let's just see if you actually came with a bow. You did, excellent, what have we got? We've got a short bow. You've got a weapon as well. We could do with having a knife for you. Make sure you've got your bow equipped, Sankey. Oh, you've actually come with a uh, butcher's cleaver. 25 there. 25. So, considering he's in an apron, that's not bad. So, if anything, we could do with a little knife. Um, I'll buy an additional shield. Gotta make sure we're not buying weapons that are already degraded, like these 40% ones. Uh, how are we doing for food? We're okay, six days. We'll stick with that, we're a little bit low in ammunition. So let's go ahead and uh, buy ourselves a little bit of ammo. Now we could get ourselves some padded leather. Hmm. Alright, let's leave this one and we'll go to the um, weaponsmith. Oh, here we go. My words. This is where you can see some uh, rather expensive weapons. Swords, in particular, are uh, a falchion, a curved sword, best suited for slashing and cutting unarmored opponents. Right, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to leave this episode here as I decide how we're going to kit out our men. If you're liking the series and want to see more, please leave a thumbs up and I'll be happy to do so. As usual, I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Cheers.